The passageway ends in a huge chamber with an arched ceiling. Stairs on the far side of the room lead up to a small platform. Atop the platform looms a golden throne decorated with glittering diamonds and rubies. Sitting in the throne is a skeleton dressed in the ancient rusted armor of a king. A weirdly glowing longsword clasped in its bony hands. Suddenly the skeleton's head turns towards you and its empty eye sockets fill with red flames. Its jaw opens in a horrible smile. It raises the longsword and points at you. So it rasps in a voice like two stones scraping together. Your pitiful town has sent a champion. How kind of them. Since you've clearly slain my goblin servant, it's only fair that you take his place and join me in death. With a grating laugh, the skeleton stands and moves toward you, readying its longsword to attack. If you attack the skeleton using your longsword, turn to entry number 20. If you attack the skeleton using another weapon you found, turn to entry number 15. If you run away, turn to entry number 3. Alright, I'm at full health, but I am sickened. Um, but I also remember that the the boy gave me a warning about what was up ahead and gave me that mace that he had down his uh, back of his shirt like he was some kind of immortal from the Highlander series. <laughs> so I think I'm going to attack with the mace, entry number 15. Remembering the farm, boar's, farm boy's warning, you leave your longsword in its sheath and grab the mace from your pack. It's time to teach this skeleton a lesson. Well, we can hope so. My attack bonus is plus six. Uh, I think that's actually going to be reduced down to plus four. Damage is 1d8 plus three. That's also going to be reduced. And the skeleton's attack bonus is four. We're going to be the same there. 1d8. Uh, damage 17 armor class for the skeleton and 14 hit points. Wow, this is going to be just sort of mathematically a pretty close battle. Uh, he actually has a little bit of an edge on me with the higher armor class and hit points. So there we go. If you were sickened and the yellow mold in the uh, by the yellow mold in the previous cavern, you take a minus two penalty on your attack rolls. For the first three attacks you make during this combat, this penalty reduces your attack bonus to plus four instead of plus six. So three attacks. All right, well, why don't I take this four-sided die and put it on three, and I will count down. Or maybe, maybe I'll, so I won't confuse myself, I'll do it one, two, three. There we go. When I get to... Uh, Get ready to flip it to number four. I'll be healthy, I guess. Here we go. It says, you are in combat. Each, uh, each round, you and the skeleton each get to make one attack. You go first each round. Roll a d20 and add your attack bonus. If the attack roll is greater than the armor class of the skeleton, uh, you hit it. Your mace shatters bone easily and deals 1d8 plus 3 damage uh, to the skeleton on each hit. After each of your attacks, the skeleton attacks you. Roll a d20, add 4. If it's greater than your armor class of 16, you take 1d8 points of damage. You alternate until you or the skeleton is reduced to 0 or fewer hit points. Note that you enter this battle with the same number of hit points you had left after the goblin fight and the trap. But don't forget your potion in case you haven't used it yet. And I've already used it. So uh, let's get to fighting. Alright, I'm at full health 
at uh, 12 hit points. I'm going to put that there. And he has 14. So let's put this on 10, if I can find it. There it is. And a 4. So there are the Skeleton King's hit points. Now as we're heading into combat, an interesting thing I noticed is that uh, together we took a look at the sickened condition and it would reduce your attack rolls, saving throws, but it reduced your damage to your attacks as well. But I'm noticing in the text that I read uh, describing the combat against this skeleton, uh, the damage was not reduced. I wonder if that was to try to keep things uh, simple for first-time players going through this solo adventure. So let's play by the rules as they are presented in this solo adventure. So we're really only going to suffer uh, three rounds of a minus two penalty. And according to this solo adventure, and I'll look it over one more time, I don't think we're going to suffer any uh, reduction in our, our damage. Alright, I get to go first. And I'm rolling a d20 plus 4. Trying to hit his armor class. That's going to be a roll of 15. That misses his armor class of 17. His armor class is pretty high. So... I attack him, but due to my weakened condition, let's see, would I have hit him otherwise? Six, seven, that would have hit him if I hadn't been sickened. So yes, due to my weakened condition, uh, my mace is not quite as effective as it normally would be, and the Skeleton King batters it aside. Alright, the Skeleton King gets his attack now. He's going to get a plus four bonus to his attack. Seventeen, that's a hit. The skeleton sword is going to do 1d8 points of damage. Ah, a one. Nice. So that drops me to 11 hit points. So perhaps as our weapons became intertwined, he pulled his sword back and it just manages to graze me along the arm giving me a minor wound. Well this is the second round I'm attacking with this penalty. Uh, evidently it will disappear after three rounds. So making my attack again uh, at only plus four. Fourteen Plus 4 is 18. That is good enough to hit. So what do I do? I do 1d8 and I add 3 to it. 3 plus 3 is 6. So that's going to drop him to 8 hit points. Alright, well my mace attack manages to find its way underneath his guard and shatters a few rib bones. I continue to press the attack, sort of pushing him forward, but now it's the Skeleton King's turn. Wow, he hits me again. An 18. 1d8 damage from the Skeleton King. Let's see what we've got. Ooh! Wow. Eight points of damage. That leaves me with three. So perhaps overconfident in my last hit, I open myself up and the Skeleton King rams his sword into my gut. I'm nearly run through. Alright, I'm going to make my attack now. Uh, plus, let's see, this is the third time I'm attacking him with this penalty. Still sickened. Plus four. Fifteen. Plus four is enough to hit him. Let me roll my damage. It's possible. I could take him out. Ugh, not with that. <laughs> 
So only four points of damage to him. So he drops down to four. So let's see. Let's imagine that his sword is still in my gut. I drop my torch and grab the mace in two hands and ram it into his jaw, cracking his jawbone. Now it's his turn to attack. A six. A six plus four is a miss. So the Skeleton King attempts to rip his sword out of my gut, but I manage to grab hold of his wrist, and I'm going to make another attack. So we've had it on three, so I think the penalty is gone. I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm sickened this, tar this turn. Come on, come on, come on, let's get lucky. Ten plus six? Because I'm up to six now, that's still not enough to heat to hit his armor class. So I had hold of his wrist. I raised my mace up in order to go for the killing strike, and he twists his blade and pulls it out and leaps back to safety. I'm standing there bleeding, clutching my side, and he probably gives an evil laugh. All right, <laughs> four to three, Skeleton King's turn. Clutching his sword in both hands, he approaches for the kill. Twelve plus four is sixteen. That hits me right on the nose. Oh boy, here we go. Six points of damage. Ah, the Skeleton King comes forward, wielding his sword, and jabs the pointy end right into my throat. All right, where do we go from here? It says, if you are defeated, turn to entry number 17. You have succumbed to your wounds. As the world slowly fades to black, your last thought is of your friends and family back in town. You regret that you were unable to protect them. Although you have died, the people of Sandpoint still need your help. You can start this adventure over by turning to entry number one and beginning from scratch. Your hit points are fully restored but anything you found is lost, and everything in the dungeon is reset and must be discovered and overcome again. When you're ready to try again, turn to entry number one. Well, folks, that's your call. It's going to be your time if you pick up the Pathfinder beginner box. Perhaps you can succeed where I failed. But I had a good time running through this solo adventure with you. And too bad I couldn't pull out the win. But I uh, let the dice fall where they, where they will. No cheating. Cheating's not fun. And there we go. There's uh, a sample of the Pathfinder Beginner Box solo adventure. Well, that's probably my future. There I am as some undead champion wandering the halls in service to the Skeleton King. <laughs> well, I hope you've enjoyed uh, learning a little bit about the Pathfinder game. Uh, I certainly have. And as you can see, to understand the rules, it's very similar to the other versions of Dungeons and Dragons that I've, I've shared on my channel. Uh, in fact, it's um, a bit more simple, uh, just simply rolling the d20 and getting your attack bonus and trying to overcome the armor class. The, the red box was very similar uh, in that way. Um, the difference was, if you can uh, see in, in the play, we didn't have specific stances or combat maneuvers. And to me, this reminds me a bit more of... Uh, some older versions of Dungeons and Dragons. 
and and some people will um, what should I say some people will like that and some people won't what I enjoy about the more simple mechanics here of rolling your dice and and finding out what happens is it it's very interesting for you to sort of make up what happened you kind of roll the dice you see how it went and then the fun part comes when you try to describe what happened if you know you were always warned in these different role-playing games in the past that if you just roll the dice and say hit miss hit miss hit two points of damage hit miss or something like that you know I hit him I missed him I hit him I missed him that is very boring the fun that I remember uh, playing with my friends was uh, making up very creative scenes about what happened and even bringing uh, details from the environment in for example I had picked up those coins along the way uh, I had a long sword and a torch I had the empty potion bottle uh, back playing with with a group of friends that taught me how to play Dungeons and Dragons we would have probably used all of that I probably would have thrown the coins in the face of the skeleton, uh, skeleton king and gotten a little bonus there the DM might have even just ruled on the spot that the, that the skeleton king was distracted and given me a free attack I mean all kinds of things can happen and it's not in the rules it's just up to you to create because the goal is not to play the perfect game by the rules the goal is to just simply have a good time and that's what I like about some of the uh, uh, the freedom that was allowed in some ways with the previous uh, editions and Pathfinder it looks like might allow for some of that uh, I'll still have to see alright well I'm looking forward to doing a little bit more with Pathfinder down the road and uh, I will catch you for some more gaming fun here on Black Belt Gaming very soon. Thanks for watching, everybody.